My name is Sam Warb Jr. I'm the superintendent here at the Marshfield Wastewater Plant. And we're here today to take a short tour and show you what wastewater is all about. Come join us. Here we are where the haulers unload. We have room for two haulers to back up. Currently this one's backed up using the six inch discharge. He's bringing in holding tank waste. We also take septic waste and a lot of industrial waste also. We charge the same rate for the people in the country that we do in the city. That way it's fair for everybody. Our job is to clean up the environment. We don't care where people live. We're here at the Influent building. Right now the water is coming down from the city through a 60 inch or 5 foot interceptor. It's 30 feet underground, comes in down into the wet well area. We have three separate Influent screw pumps that lift the wastewater over 30 feet up. And from here, it's all gravity flow through the rest of the plant. But the main thing here is these operate 24 hours a day and they feed the plant constantly. And from here, they go to the fine screens, which is our next step. Here we are at the fine screens, otherwise known as primary treatment. These were the first two screens of this style in America. They were put in in 2000 when the place was built. They're eight inch opening, which is kind of rare. And the whole purpose of fine screens are to take out what should have never been in there in the first place. When you look at it, uh, you'll see the wider pieces. Those are the disposable wipes that really are not flushable. Disposable means to be put in the garbage. Some of the other things that you'll see on the screen are paper towel and Kleenex. Toilet paper will break down and dissolve, but paper towel and Kleenex, facial tissue, will still get down here because they do not break down. It's all caught on the screen along with any or inorganics and conveyed to the next station, which is the dumpster, and we'll show you that. Here we are. This is not the most glamorous part, but it's the dumpster. So when it comes out of the fine screens, it goes through another conveyor, which washes it and compresses it and dries it, comes over the edge and drops down into this continuous bag, which contains all the odors also. This dumpster is emptied three times a week at least because of the disposable wipes that are flushed down the drain. Please do us a favor. They're all going to end up in the landfill anyway. Take the disposable wipes and put them in the garbage right off the bat. Thank you. Here we are, these are called the oxidation ditches. And we actually have two sets here and we operate them differently. This is where all the treatment takes place. The first ditch here on my right is where the influent comes in. Uh, we keep the oxygen very low there. It flows over to the other side. On this ditch over here, we have the oxygen much higher over here. We create two different conditions and have two different types of bacteria. Everything we do here is natural. We use naturally occurring bacteria. We just create the conditions that they like to grow in. By doing this, we can biologically remove the phosphorus. Our permit limit is 1.0 part per million. We have to be below that. We currently are about 0.2 and even lower. We do it with no chemicals. It's all natural. Uh, we switched over a year ago. We're saving about $140,000 a year by doing that. And the plant is running terrific. We are in a clarifier. We actually have three clarifiers. We typically use two at a time. The purpose of the clarifier is the water that came from the oxidation ditches, which is already treated, flows into here by gravity. From here, the solids, which are heavier, settle out to the bottom. The treated water rises to the top, goes over the weirs, and then that'll go out to our effluent building. But from here, the solids settle down get sucked up and they go back to the ditch on a normal basis to return the bugs back there and several days a week we waste some of those off to the GBT building which is our next stop on that. And one thing to keep in mind, this technology was invented by the Roman Empire. It's not new. This is in an empty clarifier and as you can see the baffle is what forces the solids to go down under so they continue to go down and the treated water comes up. 
are at the biosolids building. Inside there, it's a little bit noisier. But what we do is the solids that come off the bottom of those clarifiers will be brought here. We mix it with just a little bit of polymer to thicken it, and we run it over a belt. And the whole purpose is it comes in at about 0.5% solids, and it leaves at 6% solids. And all that, those solids are hauled out to farm fields as fertilizer. So if we can get more water out of it, there's less loads to haul. We actually give away about forty dollars to $50,000 worth of farm fertilizer every year. And the farmers get it because they need fertilizer and we need a place to environmentally reuse the organic material. So they need us and we need them and we work together very well. Here we are on top of the storage tanks. We have two storage tanks, each are two million gallons. And the solids that come off the gravity belt thickener come over here. Now we usually farm spread, farm land apply our solids spring and fall. So in the meantime, we have to store them. Uh, law requires 180 days of storage. We have closer to one year of storage. But it's still a total of four million gallons of organic fertilizer every year. Here we are at the effluent discharge. This is actually the final product for the wastewater plant. The water is leaving the clarifiers, coming underground, pops up here. Here's where we measure the flow. We measure the pH, the temperature, any other characteristics we have to. It's also where we sample our discharge going out to meet our EPA and DNR limits. From here, the water will flow down a step aerator. It's just like the steps in your house or at home or in school. And as it's flowing down, it creates a big foaming effect, gets dissolved oxygen in the water. And from there, it flows down, it'll go out the creek. So when you see foam on the water, that's actually a good sign because we're adding oxygen back, which the fish and aquatic life need. This particular ditch could have been a concrete pipe. Instead, we chose to be more natural. We added riprap on the sides, planted over 10 species of native grasses to help filter the water as it goes. It's about 1,500 feet long and joins up with Mill Creek. From Mill Creek there at that conjunction, it travels over 40 miles by stream where it meets in in the Wisconsin River down by Stevens Point. So the journey continues.